This is a video about ways of making designs. It's very different from grid enlargement because it is open, open, open. The three different ideas are centrifugal, spiral, concentric, and radial. I am going to do it in two parts. The first part is the centrifugal spiral. Although there are usually elements of all three or can be depending on what you want. So here's a picture circles in each circle. This is the simplest way of thinking about it. So this centrifugal spiraling energy, you could see it spiraling out, or you can think of it as spiraling in. If you use the word centrifugal, it makes you think of the tilt-a-whirl, one of those rides where there's so much energy forcing you out. It's only the spinning that keeps you attached. And you can see and you can see the spiraling energy in this peacock. Just all kinds of stuff happening. And you can also see these things in real life. This is our vegetable steamer. So the first decision is, do I want it in a circle? Do I want it in a square? Do I want it in a rectangle? Um, do I want my design to be in a triangle? Now you may not have a right angle like this at home, but If you have a square or a piece of cardboard, all you have to do is take a ruler Connect corner to corner, and then you've got a triangle. So I happen to have a lot of stuff around, but you don't need a lot of stuff. These are the kind of tools I like to play with. I have a lot of shape tracers. So if I want a series of circles, I've got them right here. What if you don't have a bunch of shape tracers? My guess is you have lids in your house. I sort of feel bad doing this because you'll become a pack rat like me. You'll like, oh my God, I could, I could do something really cool with that. Oh my gosh, I could really make something really awesome with that. And then you never throw anything away. You can ask my children, it's bad. So this is just a little tiny, tiny lid. It's a little easier to work with. But if I want circles, 
I've got them all over the place. Um, I love these guys. This is a French curve. Um, they used to be used much more when people didn't have computers to do their drawing with. And you can just take a curve and rotate it. I'm not being too careful with the symmetry here. And you can begin to get a very cool design. You know, and they're little parts and big parts. You know, these are lovely things. Well, what if you don't have a French curve? Go to your kitchen. Now, I'm assuming you have a few kitchen tools. Practice with your kitchen tools. I'm rooting around in my box of stuff. So I was looking at the scrapers and I was thinking, these make some nice shapes. I kind of like these. Please don't ask me exactly how I'm going to turn these into spirals. I will figure that out. But I really want you to... You can't go out to the store. What are you going to do? If, if you don't want to order a bunch of stuff from Amazon, what will you do? So just playing around with this handle. I want you to feel how free and easy. Now I'm assuming that you have a scissors at home. Here's a whole bunch more shapes with a scissors. So if you want to make your design freehand, great. If you think you'd like to experiment with having a sh more shapes you can work with, I am sure you can find shapes in your house. This is the basic design that I made. And then I copy, made a few copies with my copy machine and that way I was able to trace it and try coloring it in different ways. I decided to do blue things using mixed media. And I wanted to talk about the techniques that I use. Prismacolors are pencil with a lot of pigment. They go on smoothly. You can blend them. You can add layer after layer after layer. So what I'm doing is I'm adding a lot of color for my kind of medium color. I'm adding some black. And I'm letting my medium color get a little bit lighter. Then I'm going to start laying in a lighter color, layering that, and I can end up with a paler blue. Although this blue has got a gray quality to it that I'm not really loving here. And then I can add the white. With colored pencils, layering them will give you some beautiful effects. And adding white to them, just to my eyes, makes them so rich.
You can also use techniques of cross hatching. It doesn't look too shabby, does it? After I dissed on that color, that's looking rather nice. So there's a background. And then on top of that, oh man, I thought that was the blue and it's the white. I've got the wrong color. Sorry, it's the, I thought it was the blue and it was the black. So I can, that's not looking at all like cross hatching. That's just looking like lines. Let's try some cross hatching. But the point I'm trying to make is you don't have to use a solid color. You can work in a texture, just the way you can put a texture on top of, with a marker, you can do this all with colored pencil. So in addition to colored pencil, I see places where there is a colored pencil background. And then there are markers on top. Now, this is a Zig Clean Dot Color Dot marker. This is I'm not sure I'd call it an artist tool. I would call it more of an illustrator's tool or a scrapbooker's tool. Um, this is a more expensive marker, but they are definitely fun. I also want you to notice the change in color. When I make my dots straight on the paper, the paper absorbs more. But when I make my dots on the colored pencil, the colored pencil is making a surface on here. And with any marker, in the same way that you can make designs on something on plain paper, you can make designs on something you've painted, you can make designs on something with magic marker, you can draw on this also. And that is looking to me like all the different techniques I've used here. I mean, you just sort of play around with it, explore a bit, have fun with it. This is the same design as this. I transferred it onto watercolor paper and also this one's more finished. I'm not sure if it's completely finished yet, but close enough. And I wanted to talk about how I techniques that I'm using in this. So you can see I'm using washes. Very, very pale color. And I'm also using intense color. You will also notice that for my test paper, I am not using watercolor paper. I'm using an old envelope. I would not recommend doing watercolors on an old envelope. But they're quite, you know, you're going to have problems. 
making a fabulous painting if you use an old envelope. I've forgotten the color I was using. So what do we have? We've got textures. So you pull up some color and you make little dots. You make big dots. You play with it. You wash off the paint that you have. And you add another color to it. You play with it. Here are some examples of radial and concentric designs, which is what we'll be talking about next. Here's radial. Here's concentric. Here's another concentric with some radial elements. I would say that's mainly radial. More concentric with radial elements. And here's the beginning of a radial idea. And I'm only using ballpoint pen here. I hope this whets your appetite. And I'm looking forward to making our next video.